Welcome back to the channel. If you're a subscriber, apologies for the short hiatus. I have been under the weather. Here in the UK, the weather's not so great, so I've had sort of a chest infection. If you're not a subscriber, then hit the subscribe button. You've just got a free apology. Obviously, on this channel, I've mentioned a ton of different games, a ton of different miniature and war games. Today, we're going to look at a few alternatives to Warhammer, the Age of Sigmar stuff, the ever popular stuff. We're going to take a look at a few unique examples, some with interesting rules, some with games you wouldn't expect, and some that hopefully give you different alternatives if you're looking for a game. Hopefully this list inspires new players to get into these games, or maybe some Warhammerers or Sigmarers, whatever you call yourselves, to take the plunge and try out a few new games as well. Obviously this is not meant as a slight on Warhammer in any way, it's just offering alternatives. Obviously that's the most popular, so these are just other variations. I'm a huge fan of some of the figures. I've actually got the Red Gobbo, the Christmas thing, painted that up. I'll flash up a picture here. So I am very interested in those games, but these are for those people that aren't. Coming in at number five, the first on the list, or I guess last, would be The Walking Dead. Now this is a Mantic Games, Mantic Games game, I guess. It's completely out of left field if you play something like Warhammer. In this, you get very small groups and you aim to gather supplies or take out the other group, depending what you're playing, as there is Call to Arms and All Out War. If you're a fan of the TV shows or comic books, this will definitely be one for you, as there are, other than the other players, there's a ton of walkers in between you as well. And what I really like about this game is you can use strategies like, when you fire a gun, it obviously creates mayhem, it creates sound, which draws walkers to you. Now, if there's another player between you and that walker, the walkers aren't gonna recognize you having the gun, they're just gonna come to the sound. So they're actually gonna swarm your opponent rather than you. And it's really cool little moments like this which make me enjoy this game. Depending which game you're playing, you're gonna be vying for objectives or it's just gonna be an all out team deathmatch. You can cut out your side with upgrades. There are ways to create your own characters so you could create yourself in this game, which I do think is very unique and very interesting. But most importantly, well for me in particular, there is also a narrative mode. That is one of my favourite things about war games, about miniature games, creating these stories that we've seen on the big screen or in comic books. So this was one that drew me into it immediately. You can play out ever evolving campaigns in which you battle against survivors, you battle against zombies and you battle against surviving or battle for surviving. It's an interesting game and the gameplay does offer unique things. Like I said before, with dragon zombies around the board, they create interesting dynamics where you're not just fighting one opponent, you're also fighting the walkers. As well as that, there is a threat tracker. So whenever you create sound like a gunshot or somebody screams because they're panicked, that slowly goes up, which means more and more walkers are drawn to your location, making it more and more difficult for the humans to do what they need to do. I think that's a really interesting way of looking at a game like this, and it makes it more than just a team deathmatch, which is why I put it in at number five. The other reason I put it in at number five is because there, it's divided into two, so the miniatures can be shared across both, but there's different cards and different rules, which do make it slightly more daunting for new players. But I do think if you get past that, this is gonna be one that you do enjoy and it's one that's worth trying. If this one sounds like it could be for you or you've got any better suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Coming in at number four, I've gone for A Song of Ice and Fire, obviously based off the book series by George Martin and the TV show, which he heavily influenced. And then it was taken a slightly different direction, but we don't want to get into that. The miniature game is nothing like that season. It focuses on all the characters you love, all the armies, all the... If you're massively into the books, this is definitely one for you as it plays heavily on intrigue. It has a very unique aspect in the tactics board where you can influence battles not on the field, but in the safety of your own home. With the likes of Littlefinger, Cersei Lannister, Jack and Hagar, there's Arya Stark. There's so many different ways you can influence it by paying people off. You could order reinforcements for a certain group. There's so many different tactics as well as the tactics board itself. Each character has their own unique ability. So it makes for very interesting games. The reason I put it at number four isn't anything to do with bad gameplay or bad characters or bad models or bad design, anything like that. It's more, again, it's that thing where they've changed cards, but the supply to replace those isn't enough. And I've heard in some areas I'm not even having them yet. They have combated this with an app, so I should give props to that because other games on this list haven't. They've made the changes, but there hasn't been the app, there hasn't been the cards coming out to replace them. 
So I, sh I should give this some props for that. It's just quite annoying, especially if you're a new player. Like I bought the starter set, but a lot of those cards you don't even use now. Like I just said, outside of the battle, there's all this intrigue and other stuff going on, which make it so much more interesting. I would say the gameplay is easy to get into, but hard to master, which I think is a perfect mix. You could throw this on a table and you could quickly learn how to play it, but then once you get into all the smaller details, that's when it truly becomes a war game, I think. Most people should give it a chance to. It's very unique in its rank and file system, as I don't think there's many great versions of that now, I do think this is one of the best. I'm not a massive fan of that design, but I think this does it well. And they've even used it to their advantage with some of the themes of Game of Thrones and all the different armies. I would say one more gripe is the Martells aren't in the game yet. They are such a big part of the books. I think they probably should have already been introduced at this point. We have not that long ago got Greyjoys and they're slowly getting more and more into their army. So it may be a while before we see Martells or any other, which is a shame. I think for people that have seen the TV show, you're probably not going to enjoy the Martells other than Oberyn, because he was, I'd say probably the best part of the show when he was in it. He really did epitomize what Game of Thrones was. He had the forked tongue, he had this wit about him, this charisma, but then again, he was one of the most powerful and strongest fighters in Westeros. Even though, obviously that thing happened, I can say what it is. If you haven't seen Game of Thrones at this point, it's been years, the books have been out, this stuff has happened. The Mountain versus the Viper, one of the most incredible fights, but also heartbreaking. After I finished that, it probably took me, I'm not kidding when I say it took me like a week, maybe two weeks to sort of regain myself and want to watch this show again because it did break my heart. I absolutely loved the character and I didn't see that coming. And that's what Game of Thrones does so well. Even in this miniature game, there's moments where someone could play a card, especially those Lannisters, and it just changes the game. It's very similar to the card game. So if you've played the living card game, you're gonna enjoy this as well. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, if you're a Song of Ice and Fire fan, this is one for you. Now, number three is gonna be a divisive one because it's not a war game. It is still a miniature game, but it's slightly more collectible. And that is Heroclix. Now, there's Marvel Protocol, DC have their own, but they're very much divided. Heroclix not only brings Marvel and DC to the same tabletop, so you could have Superman versus Thor. It's also got IPs like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, Halo, there is so many, and they are always looking to add more. So I'm very excited to see what else comes out of Heroclix. Next year, I think it is, we have the Disney Plus set based on the series of What If, which I think is gonna be probably the biggest set for Heroclix. So if you wanna get into it now, now is a good time, because I think that will bring a lot of players to the game, which Heroclix definitely needs. I'm gonna be honest with you now, if you play Warhammer, and go to a Heroclix event, there's gonna be a massive difference, not only in the amount of players, but probably the age of players as well. From playing Heroclix, most people are around my age, if not older, so I've met players that are in their 50s. It's just incredible that this game has been going for so long, and it's got such a strong player base. It is a small player base, but I think that works in its advantage in some cases. Like here in the UK, it is very tight-knit. Most players will know each other, most players will have played each other at some point, and I think you can lose that when the game gets bigger. So although you want a really healthy player base, I do quite like the small uniqueness of Heroclix, but if you're looking for something bigger, there is Marvel Protocol, there is DC's, have they released one? They've definitely got a miniature game because I've seen the pieces, but yeah, I would say, if not, look at Heroclix. It's slightly different to the other ones, so you're not gonna buy the models you want, you could on the second hand market, but normally you get a booster of five pre-painted figures. So what that means is if you're a hobbyist and you're looking to build an army and paint it and create it and have this experience with it, Heroclix is not the one. These come pre-painted even though I, I reckon most of you or even me could paint them better. So you could always go over them, but it's a very different market. So this might not be one for everyone, but if you're into like I am, A Song of Ice and Fire, Star Wars, Middle Earth, there's so many Walking Dead. I've been looking at Monster Apocalypse. There's so many different miniature games. So for me, Heroclix is one where I don't have to paint stuff, I don't have to build stuff. I can just get the figures and enjoy the game. And that's what it should be about. How it normally works is Heroclix will take a comic book series. So if you're a comic book reader, I would say this is the perfect miniature game for you. They'll take a series like Rise and Fall or Weapon X and stuff like that. We've had themes based around characters. 
and they will release around 70 figures in a set. Now these I would say every 3-4 months, so there is a lot more miniatures you would expect than in other games, but you don't have to paint them, you don't have to make them, they are ready to go. Heroclix is one that is very special to me, it's what got me started in this hobby in the first place, almost, oh god, I don't know how many years ago, it would have probably been 10, 15 years ago, probably somewhere in there, that really ages me. Um, yeah, so it's very special to me. If you're interested in checking it out, there are a ton of videos on games being played and how to play on my channel. I'll flash them up somewhere here. So let me know if this video gets you into trying it, because I think the only thing holding Heroclix back is the amount of players playing it. In at number two, I've gone for Star Wars Legion. Now this one is one that has really delved me into miniatures and the hobby of it all. Me and my girlfriend picked it up during lockdown as something to do. We didn't think we'd enjoy the painting and building of it and building the droids from the Separatist Alliance. Sort of, yeah, it doubled down on that. But other than that, we've really enjoyed this hobby, creating these things that we've seen on screen and painting them in our own schemes and adding stuff and creativity. And it's just been, it's been incredible. It's been something that we've been able to spend time doing together. So it's not just the game itself, it's the hobby. And I think that's what's important. The game itself though, beyond the hobby, is something I quite enjoy and it does a few things very well. So at the start, you're gonna choose objectives and how the game is played and stuff that works as victory points. Even the weather and stuff that affects conditions. It's such an interesting way of doing it. You're gonna get rid of ones that you don't wanna play and eventually you're gonna be left with a set of three on how to play the game. You can choose from your favorite Sith, your favorite Jedi, bounty hunters, droids, aircrafts, animals like tauntauns and stuff there is so much in this game to make it unique from other ones and obviously if you're a fan of the movies fan of the tv shows you're gonna adore this game one side could be the empire with boba fett and bosk flying around the battlefield or you could be the rebel alliance driving speeder trucks full of wookies into your enemy you can create some really memorable moments from this game and I think that's what's important and what I remember from the TV and movies. Most importantly, we've seen a ton of previews come in. So there's Mercenary Clans, Ewoks, there's gonna be new game modes like Heist and Monsters roaming around the battlefield as you fight, very similar to what I said with Walking Dead. So I think this could be quite interesting and not only a big year this year, but it looks to only get bigger and bigger. So if you're looking for a game to get into now that has a very strong, healthy player base, and one that's just gonna go from strength to strength, this is the game for you. I have gone into this game massively in another video, so I'm not gonna keep going on and on about it. If you wanna see that, I'll flick it up somewhere here. And I will be doing one for my first place, which we should probably get into now. First place was very difficult in what order to put these in. And it's it, it's no by no means, I would say this is my enjoyment level. It's just what I'm playing now. I'm massively into number one, where I haven't played as much of two and three. But like I said, three is always gonna be the game for me. Two is one that I've enjoyed with my girlfriend. Three is one for me personally, one of my favorite IPs. It's one that I've played with a lot of friends and have memories with, and that is Middle Earth. Fantasy, medieval, all of that stuff has always been something very special to me. It's why I love Dungeons and Dragons so much and why I play it monthly. Tolkien created something truly special with Middle Earth, and even now, it's still, I would say, the pinnacle of the genre. The Hobbit is incredible. Lord of the Rings, amazing, even better, I would say. Most people dislike the Hobbit movies because of the CGI and other stuff, how they deviated so heavy. But I love both sets of movies. I love both sets of books. I think the expanded stuff with the Silmarillion and other things, I just can't get enough of this lore. I love watching videos on it. I love reading about it. There is, for me, there's no point where I'm like, okay, that's enough. That's enough Lord of the Rings. I need more and more. It's such an inspiration to so many shows you probably don't realize. Even yourself, maybe when you're creating your own D&D story or writing a book, you can't go into that genre without being somewhat inspired. I won't say you're trying to copy it, but what you know from that genre comes from Tolkien, it comes from Lord of the Rings, it comes from Middle Earth. They have some of my favorite models of all games. The Treebeard currently out with Merry and Pippin, I would say is my favorite. It's a gorgeous model. The size of it is incredible. It's awe-inspiring on the battlefield. I just love the Ents in general. And then we've got stuff in The Hobbit like Thorin and Dane. Dane is probably my favorite character from that. Him on his war boar or pig. 
It's just, these are just moments from the film I love and having the chance for me to replay them on a battlefield with friends is honestly perfect. I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. Um, you guys might know from when the game was actually out, but between 2002 and 2007, I played the, I don't know if it was the original, I think it might have been, but me and a few friends, I think there was six of us, met every Sunday and we started to build our own table, we started to build our own bases and get all this hobby stuff that we had no idea about. But we were exploring the hobby together, we were building our own armies, we had all these different armies that we'd just throw on a board and play. It was just, some of those memories are the most special to me and that is why I love the game now. Obviously it's gone through a few different iterations now. At one point I think it was rank and file, which I remember seeing in a games workshop shop. Which is strange now because I went into one the other day and they've literally just got one stand of Lord of the Rings. It's so strange. I remember walking in and immediately War of the Ring was there for me to try. It's just such... It doesn't get the love of Warhammer, which is why I've made this video, honestly. I do think it's up there. The IP is huge. It should be as cared for. I mean, they still do. We still get constant releases. We get books. We get all the good stuff. I shouldn't be complaining. And it's not really a complaint. It's just... Trying to show my passion for this game is what this video is about. Maybe to get a few new players into it would be the hope of this video. I would love to get the group together I just mentioned before that we played with. I mean, two of them do still play with me now, which is incredible. Maybe a third might join. The other two, probably not. One's not even in the country and one I haven't spoke to in quite a while. But I promise now, if the time ever comes where one of them's back in the country and somehow i've connected with the other guy and we're somehow <laughs> drawn back into this game it would just be incredible i promise now if that happens i will make a video on it not only just to show you guys but it's just it's something i would like to keep honestly because that is one of the if i think back to school now it's one of my fondest memories honestly just meeting with friends playing some games it's what it's all about it's what it's about now so i would love to do that and might actually see if it's possible one of them does still like my Instagram posts on the Lord of the Rings stuff, so maybe there's a chance. But I think at the end of the day, that's why we played these type of games. Moments with friends, moments on the battlefield that we'll remember forever. Let me know in the comments your greatest memories playing war games with your friends. Let me know if you think I've missed any, maybe Monster Apocalypse, maybe a few others. Drop them in the comments below. If you've made it to this point, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.